Hi, blockchain and cryptography enthusiasts. Welcome to ZK Marek, where I explain all things crypto. Before we dive in, we want to thank the Ethereum Ecosystem Support Program and VLayer for their invaluable support in making this video. Today, we will learn about how a group of people can agree on a random number that nobody knows, yet can still use it to perform calculations. This is a base for trusted setup used in ZK snarks like Plonk, Grow16, but also vertical trees. So let's take a look at the construction of such a setup. Trusted setup is a construct where a secret number, often denoted as tau, is generated randomly within a finite field and is shared among all parties involved. However, nobody knows its value. How come? The number is shared in an encrypted form as a point on an elliptic curve encrypted by the same method we already talked about many times. We will multiply it by a generator point. What is more, we will store not only encrypted tau, but also subsequent powers of tau. From tau to the first power, tau squared, all the way to the power of n, where n is the size of the trusted setup. But that is not all. We will encrypt tau using two different generator points from two different subgroups for the same elliptic curve. The second array, which is generated with G2, is much smaller than the first array. But wait, how come we can create such tables without anyone learning the tau? The answer is a trusted setup ceremony, also known as powers of tau. In the trusted setup ceremony, multiple participants add their own layer of randomness to ensure the secrecy and security of the final parameter set. The ceremony begins with an initial secret tau zero generated by the first participant and then is deleted by him from memory. This tau zero is used to create a sequence, raising tau zero to the powers of one through n. Next, a participant adds their own secret tau one and again is deleted by him. This process continues with each participant adding their own secret tau, creating a cumulative sequence that includes all the contributions up to that point. How can we be certain that none of the participants were malicious and didn't compromise the security of the setup? To do that, we need to learn about pairings, which are a crucial part of zero-knowledge proofs. Pairing in the context of elliptic curve cryptography is a special type of function, which takes two points from two different elliptic curve subgroups and returns a field element. The function, also called pairing operator, is usually designated with E. It has three interesting properties. First, we say it's bilinear, because it satisfies a following condition. If we take group operation of two elements in one of the arguments, we can distribute that into group operation on two pairings. So each component of the original sum will land as an argument in one of the pairings. Note that operations will be different in the argument and in the result of pairing. In arguments, we have elliptic curve points, which we will add. The result of pairings are field elements, which we will multiply. Now let's suppose we add the same point in one argument eight times. Via the bilinearity property, we should be able to replace this expression with the multiplication of pairings. So, if we have such an operation on pairings where we scale one or both arguments by factor A or B, we can move these factors to the exponent. And as a consequence, the factors can be switched from one argument to another without changing the value of the pairing. The non-degeneracy condition makes sure that the solution isn't trivial. That is, if you put non-zero elements from groups G1 and G2, you should not get the identity element, 1. And finally, the computability condition sees that the operation is efficient. During the ceremony, each participant generates numbers that are supposed to be consecutive powers of tau. However, a malicious participant can provide numbers that are not consecutive powers of tau. To understand this, Let's look at the setup. We have two sequences of points, P0 up to Pn minus one and Q0 up to Qk minus one. To detect malicious behavior, we use pairings. We construct an operation on two points of the setup and use the bilinearity property of the pairings with which we can move tau to the exponent and to the other argument. So, we decompose pi and qi, and thanks to pairings operations, as if magically, we can see if the points are actually correctly calculated. By checking the pairings of the parameters at different indexes, 
we can confirm that they align correctly with the expected sequence. This method allows us to validate the sequence incrementally and catch any deviations introduced by a malicious participant. In another scenario, a malicious participant can ignore the previous array entirely. Instead of continuing from P, they might start a new array, P tilde. Apart from these arrays, we also still have other arrays, Q and Q tilde that correspond to generator point G2. Here, we must verify that P tilde is correctly derived from P. We once again use pairings to ensure the continuity. We have to remember that the first argument of the pairing is associated with generator point G1 and the second argument with G2. So in our case, P and Q respectively. We take the operation on P and Q tilde, which is tau tilde times G2. So we can once again use the property of pairings and move tau from one argument to another. Thus, the pairing on an element from the original array and Q tilde should equal the element from the new array. If the verification passes together with the previous check, it confirms the new array P tilde is a valid continuation from the previous array. Lastly, there is one more way to break the ceremony. What if all the people save the tau they created, when they were supposed to keep it secret, even from themselves? This is why we call the tau's toxic waste, because with them ceremony members can recreate secret tau. So, how is the ceremony secure? Well, it is sufficient only for one honest person to keep their tau secret. The ceremonies are open, so if you want to be absolutely sure the setup is secure, you can join the ceremony. So how can such a secret encrypted number be used? Let's try to see how we can link it to polynomial evaluation. Suppose then that we have a polynomial f given by the formula. So for a given number, we can evaluate the polynomial. Wanting to encrypt the polynomial, we once again multiply it by g. So using the trusted setup, we can represent the polynomial f in terms of tau. By combining the coefficients of the polynomial with these pre-computed points, we get the following form. We thus have computed an encrypted value corresponding to the polynomial without knowing the argument tau. With that new trick, we are just one step away from understanding vertical trees. Next, polynomial commitments. Thanks for watching ZK Marek channel.